Desperate measures. Ourobras, Kbosh, and Death Shadow. Can you use them to win this turn? Uh, we'll see. Uh, creature you control of haste. It's the only thing that matters to us. Uh, second artifact, Bosch the Iron Brand deals damage equal to the sacrifice. Creatures convert at mana cost to target creature or player. Where X is your life total. Um, target pyramid, you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. If you have five or less life, instead each permanent you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. A flame wave sounds like it's a good idea. Um, we get flame wave, do four damage to each one of his creatures. And him. Um, enter battlefield, pay any amount of life, put an XX box minion. I mean, I think I want to play 11 life here. I have what? 10 total, so that'd be 4. I pay all that life, I go down real low. Uh, he becomes a, what, 13 13? Yeah, well, 12 12. That'd be 12 18. 22 damage. But he still has, we still have these two freaking guys. These two freaking guys. I mean, there's no way he'd ever win from that. Um, I could quake for four. See, the thing is, I could do this, give him pro red. Quake for three puts me at not, no. I I need to get in that twelve damage. Huh. Well, flame wave makes it so that I can. Cause that's what. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, that, that would wipe the board. But it doesn't help me. This gets me down real low. Gives me the option to play a... What if we did it to... I have, what, ten mana? So to the point where I could do it for one. If I did 10 mana on this guy, put out a creature, and did one damage to every creature on the board. Don't think that helps me, unfortunately. And it would still just give me another 11 11 with haste. And proc blue. So, all my creatures would have proc blue. So, I can only block two creatures, which would probably be the two 11 11s. And then he would take 10. I need to be able to quake for five. So, that's six mana. So, I can do four, get myself down to f six life. And then, so that's five mana, so that gives me five. I can do four, and then proc blue. So I can do this, go down to five life. Let me see. That gives me one, two, three, four, five. So I go down to four, and go down to five life. So I want to pay seven. Right? 
So seven will put me at five. I earthquake for four. And that puts him at 18. Wipes his board. And gives me 18 to attack with. Faith shield. Right, it should be if you. Each permanent you control gains protection from the color choice. And we choose blue. So all of my permanents have proc blue. And we hit him for 18. And peace, homie. Yeva. Good game. Alright, on to the next one. What's going on, guys? spark here and we're back with sculpting the perfect warrior uh, there has been a problem with this um, I have already beaten these challenges these last three I'll show you them these last three here I have already beaten so I will go through my logic of what I was originally thinking and the correct solutions uh, I apologize but they were like an hour-long video because they are actually very hard challenges um, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, someone's going to be like, oh, well, my deck's bigger and I beat it faster than you, so. But no, they, they were relatively long challenges. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'll kind of give you the logic. I almost had a lot of them, but, you know, little things. Um, so I'll give you the play-by-play -play, uh, and what I was originally thinking and what the correct answer is, so. Teferi's Moat set to black and arrest have locked your creatures away this game, leaving you and your opponent's mercy. With sculpting steel in hand, can you find a way to win this turn? Now this one, I had the right play. I had it down to the T, except for the last thing that you need to do. Okay, so originally I'm sitting here going, okay, well we've got this creature, it has first strike, and it's very scary. We obviously can't let it do anything. We have a metamorph in hand and we're at one life. It costs who to play him. So, what I was thinking was, we flip this over here. Sack it to a creature. Boom. Sculpting steel, copying, copying batter skull. This was the one that I originally, I did this a hundred times. Want to draw a card? Yes, we want to draw a card. Because drawing cards is good. Um, equip this over here. kill the creature because obviously we can't get through for any damage otherwise boom so Phyrexian Metamorph comes out now we go back down to one life we're like hey I'm gonna copy that guy play our spells we have this draw two cards now originally I was thinking well originally I had the right idea. We played the Sword of Feast and Famine. But I was thinking, what if we could get him for Sword of Body and Mind? You know, he has more cards than we could ever imagine. It doesn't matter. We could get out the 2-2 and use it to sack and do damage, because we can get him down really, really, really low with this setup. And this is the correct setup. And I was like, I can get him down to just a few health. You know, I wonder if that's the right play. Um, I also tried drawing as many cards as possible to try and get the repulse off. Didn't work. So, we equip everything onto the pure steel. Because pure steel is a beast. It's very important that your lands untap because you have to replay cards. So, let's just keep going with this. Equip all of these guys onto here. Make a very big scary pure steel paladin now again this is not my first time 
So if you just jumped ahead to see the solution, this is not the first time. And again, I apologize for the super long videos. And I actually had re-recorded them and the audio wasn't there. So, you know, good times with this whole setup here. So we attack for that, get in for 17. He goes down to three. Uh, we sack him. Just do one damage to players. Audric. Uh, repulse targeting our pure steel. Our pure steel, not our, not the arrest. Now we play the pure steel. Equip a mortar pod. And this is the part that I had originally messed up. I returned this batter skull to my hand and not the one that has the token marker. So you pay three, return the batter skull, you pay three, and replay it as I did a mortar pod. But this part is entirely up to you how you want to do it. You can leave uh, him out on the field and replay that as a batter skull if you really want, and then equip uh, the thing for free or you can just make it a mortar pod and kill him this way so that's it 20 damage in one turn killing Audric and advancing to the next challenge so let's go to the challenge ladder the next one was completely stumping I had no idea oh let's read this first nature's revolt has brought all of the lands in the battlefield to life can you engineer a solution to win this turn? So originally, there's a ton of different options here, which is probably why I struggled with it so much, is we're actually even on the number of creatures untapped. And I was like, okay, how can I possibly make this so that you know, I can start getting two for ones? And make it so that I can just swing for six cards. So I was like, Aether Adept and Right of Replication. The only problem is Right of Replication costs 9, 10, 11, 12. And you only return six permanents. So that's actually a two for one in his favor. Um, Spectral Flight gets us four damage in, but not enough to kill him. Uh, Vol Volition Reigns enters the battlefield. If Enchant Permanent is untapped, un untap it. You gain control of it. I was like, okay, so what can we take? We could take this, we could take that, we could take one of his lands, but again, that doesn't help us. So, I mean, we could get in for five if we did the Volition Reigns, which actually might be a viable option, but here's the solution that I used. We write a replication this guy. You know, I originally did this, the Archaeomancer, and look through and see what we can get back. So if you do a whole bunch of downpours, uh, it doesn't help you. I mean, you could target downpour every time, and you might actually be able to get them back. Uh, your lands are blue, or are not not blue. They're colorless, so they get returned to your hand. Uh, Diminish doesn't help you at all. Uh, that doesn't help you at all. I mean, unless you want to wipe his board. Uh, Unsummon doesn't help you. Reality spasm is two and X, so that doesn't help you. So right replication is really your only option. So this is what you do, right? Replication five times on Archaeomancer. Right replication. Right a replication. And right a replication. And after that it doesn't really matter what the last two cards you grab are, because it doesn't matter at all. So let this go through its thing. So now we have all of our rights back. Uh, we put into play five copies of a forest. Yes, a forest. Uh, at which point we write a replication, two mana, and get ourselves an Ura Spine. And now you cannot use his ability because these have summoning sickness like Dryad's Armor. 
if you remember Dryad's Arbor, I think it was in Future Sight block, that area time shift block. But it was a land, it was a 1-1 one, one that was a land. So what we want to do now is we want to put in a copy that is Acidic Slime. Acidic Slime is Death Touch, destroy an artifact, enchantment, or land. So he enters the battlefield, we destroy this enchantment. These become lands. We can activate Earth Spine's ability several times, targeting him, targeting him, targeting him, again, and again. Now you could probably... Oh. Excuse me. You could probably uh, do things differently if you really wanted to. You could probably... Uh, cycle through lands and spectral prism him if you went for the acidic slime first you just gotta make sure you don't tap too many of the forest but that way it's just easier it gets us in for six and we win so no you actually could not use solution rains but there's the damage that's the game let's go on to challenge number end <laughs> so goblin rating it's goblins versus angels use your goblin army to win this turn okay so here's my problem with this challenge this challenge would never happen in real life 90% of the time here's why because you would use temple bell right away and say do I have an out to deal with these bane slayers do I have a way to deal with these bane slayers and lava axe is on top of your library so Love Axe is on top of the library. You know, you can hit for 10 damage, roughly. Get shot for 12, and then be like, okay, well, I can't win this game. So, what you need to do is do that first. Okay, that's the most important thing, is play him first. That gets rid of the Lava Axe, and now you Temple Bell. So, this is one of those super situational things that, you know, you're never going to do. No, so, no, it, it's just, it doesn't seem like it'd be my logic to do that first. So now that they're out there, you want to keep the five mana for Chandra's Fury. We want to declare attackers, swing with the team. And I actually had to do this to my buddy the other day, and I beat through him this exact same way. I'm just not targeting myself with... Chandra's Fury. So we hit ourselves in the face with Chandra's Fury. Um, the goblin dies. We choose creatures. Poke that guy. And we stop the timer. Got shot. And kill that guy. So he gains zero life and takes 14. So that's the solution. Um, originally, you know, I went through every different option there. I'll show you guys what I originally did, just because it's going to take a second. Or it might as well just take a second while I wrap things up. So originally it was like, oh, I'm going to Temple Bell Furnace of Wrath and just do as much damage. Never, ever Predator Dragon. You know, that never occurred to me. Because it's just they have protection from dragons. <laughs> it's not the it's not the card. Uh, doesn't have haste, doesn't have it doesn't have haste and I thought maybe you know giving my goblins plus one plus one might help them but again the solution is clearly uh, you can't let any of your creatures be hit by bane slayers so that's that um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you like the video if you like the challenges if you like seeing me play everything here uh, you know leave a like subscribe Leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, don't do anything. Um, you know. So, if you didn't like it, I'm sorry. If you liked it, come back. There's more. Alright guys, I'll see you later.